access this. Okay. Now this one ends up activating. Do you want to explain it? Sure, absolutely. Well, let's get you in camera with it. Okay. Okay, this is a multiple classic computer. It emulates uh, different uh, classic computers. We have now the Atari 2600, the uh, Commodore Amiga and the C64 implemented already. It's emulated in hardware, so it's an FPGA based design, so it's not a software emulator. Uh, it has an SD card port where you actually can then add uh, content via the SD cards, so all the application and games resides on the SD card. Uh, we have a partnership with Cloanto uh, for the C64 Forever and Amiga Forever. Uh, so that allows us to ship the system uh, with uh, 255 games for the C64 and more than 100 games uh, for the Amiga, including demos. And uh, you have the capability to update the system via UPC, so you can actually uh, get some uh, ROMs and some content there, put it on the SD card and update the system as well via the PC. Okay, so is it classic Amiga hardware then? It's a 500, okay. Amiga 500, with external memory expansion in the moment, and uh, we're working on uh, the AGA chipset and a couple of additions there. In the moment, it's a standard Amiga 500. Cool. cool. It has a mouse port, uh, so you can connect it to a PS2 mouse. You can connect a keyboard, a PS2 keyboard. It has a VGA output, which you can connect straight to your uh, plasma screen or to your uh, PC monitor. And it comes as well in an S-Video version, which uh, you can as well connect into a TV. Two DB9 inputs, actually, where you can then hook up your joysticks. Uh, USB for further expansion, for uh, um, uh, further capabilities. And here the micro SD card slot where you insert the SD card. Any future systems you plan on implementing? With it? Yeah, actually we are looking into a couple of different classic uh, systems, maybe the Apple II, uh, the one ship MSX, uh, and this kind of things. Uh, we have as well a blog there, uh, which is www.arcaderetrogaming.com, is the web page, and the blog is www.arcaderetrogaming.com, and we always post the, the latest news and the latest updates on the course we develop. Usually we have the policy the course are for free, so you get them actually on our web page, you can download them, you put them on the SD card and you can upgrade the system pretty much on your own. So there's no need to change the system, you get by the system once and then you go to our web page and get the latest calls. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, um, the uh, general notion, I mean, the AXS is a, a weird instruction. So pretty much what we have here now is we have the Commodore C64, Atari 2600 and the Amiga on the system. I now start the Atari 2600 up. We have always a men menu on top of it, a game selection menu and a user menu. The user menu actually allows you to put your own ROM content into the system. It's a user folder on the SD card and you simply actually copy your, your uh, ROMs into it. Starting up is as simple as selecting it, pressing the fire button. Here you can of course select the difficulty switches for the Atari 2600, and you press a button and that's it. And then you have your game actually, and uh, can enjoy your game. Oops. So this is now actually the Atari 2600 implementation. Each game menu supports up to 10,000 different entries, so you can get up to 10,000 games uh, in, uh, onto it for one specific uh, platform. If you like to play a different kind of uh, classic computer, you simply press the button, comes again back to the core selection menu, now I can start up, for instance, the Commodore C64, you press the fire button, scans the SD card, and now we have the Commodore C64. We support in this game folder all the uh, games which are on the Amiga Forever CD from Cloanto. So there are more than 100 games on it and more than 100 demos. And uh, actually then they show up now here in this game folder. I now say select one, for instance, Shoplifter. The, the only thing you need to do is press a button. We have an auto load function. It loads it automatically. It runs it automatically. So you don't have to type the load and run commands. Um, we have as well a 1541 menu, so this actually shows you the 1541 internally, the tracks, the sector modes, so you can see actually what's going on inside. So if I now, no, 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 oh, that's pretty much the shoplifter here. This is the, the menu, you can play a shoplifter. 
again the same uh, so, I mean, it's a sort of say, uh, philosophy that you can add your own content but, as well. I mean, the I can press control alt delete then the system starts up in NDSC or I can press control alt uh, insert and it shows up in PAL. So you have a PAL system and an NDSC system pretty much combines both hardwares in one system actually. The user menu allows you to add your own games and your own content so you can select up to uh, 10 different uh, discs pretty much. Just simply you click them, select them and then you say start. Now it shows up as a C64. Now of course you have to type your load command. Combining rotate right with the add instruction. I don't know what that's useful for. Searches it, loads it. I can actually enable now again the disc menu so we see what's going on. Reads the sectors, reads the tracks. And if it's uh, finished with loading, I simply start it with run. Um, with this button, I can toggle between the different discs. So I toggle now between pretty much the four different discs we have into the system. If the content of the disc will change, you save back to the discs. This gets inverse, and you again press the same the button. It stores it back to the SD like card. To allow you some configuration capabilities, we have a preference know, menu. No, yeah. no so you can actually as well uh, go to the preference menu. Card. You can set coloration, it's okay. it's pre uh, with video settings. You we have a keyboard layout. Yeah, you can actually configure it for the real C64 keyboard with all the original buttons and logos. So this is the really original, so to say, lo uh, buttons and logos, so you really can program it in basic as well if you like to. It uh, has pretty much all the labels of the original C64, uh, with the restore key and some special keys which you need on the C64. We have uh, actually uh, the uh, capability here to do uh, as well uh, support Jiffy DOS kernel, so you can put the Jiffy DOS kernel on it. And we have the capabilities to change yeah, some settings on 1541. And, and the joystick. So that's the C64. If you have the game, what kind of joystick? We have as well uh, the uh, Amiga oh. now, which we are just yeah. releasing actually. It's the first time we show it to the public here. Uh, again, the same story. You have a, you have a game joystick, selection menu, which is uh, as well hosting the games from the Amiga Forever CD. And this is just again, the Amiga Forever CD has more than 100 Amiga games and as well demos. Yeah, that's, that's so we are actually then supporting as well the yes, content yes, from yes, the Amiga yes, CD. Okay. Yeah, then, yeah, I'm fine, then. So similar way, you go, the, you go down, you select pretty much the game you would like, later, press the fire button. Loads the kickstart oh, ROM, loads the disk uh, ROM, and now boots up the Amiga automatically, and of course starts the uh, starts up the Amiga 500 as, as, as normal. More expensive. And this is it's more deal. expensive. Okay, it's more expensive so it's because of the ship. Loading coming up. Okay. It's so kickoff two, for instance. Here, have, uh, so uh, now pretty much uh, the extra $10 you can start the game okay. as normal as you would do with the with the. When you said that the has all the cores already. Yes. Okay. Already uh, already we have as well a user menu into the Amiga, we did not put so the Amiga you can as well yet. use do the same stuff. You have a user folder, you, you simply yes, copy your ADF files into this folder. And this is now this menu, it shows you all the different ADF files. We support in the moment up to four disks, so the original Amiga could support up to four different disk files. That's what we support here as well. So it's actually the same if I now uh, uh, select uh, two disks. I put one uh, disk, so to say, into the disk drive zero and another one in the disk drive one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what we would do here. We start the Amiga, automatically kickstart loads, disk one loads, disk four loads will be mounted actually into the drives and the system starts up normally. Yeah. So that's now the Amiga 500. Uh, we work on different cores. So we keep on going pretty much and work on different cores uh, to get more classic computers on the system. It can hold up to eight different classic cores. The system, you don't have to change the hardware. You can update the system, you go out to our web page and you download the latest core. Uh, I can show you the update uh, capability as well. Simply you hold down the fire button and then you oh, use, uh, toggle so your on off Amiga switch. That brings yes, you into the boot menu. Okay. And, that's, and uh, that's this, the boot menu yeah. pretty much um, you um, yeah. can select uh, uh, here the menu, menu for the MCC to CSD. It scans now the SD card, so this are the cores left on the SD card. And this are the cores for pretty much which are on the on the system. We are planning more. So we erase one. So that's now I erase now a core out of the 
and flash off the system. If I now go to core selection, we miss okay. now the Atari 150, so it's gone. So you just now you would download the latest core from our web page, you would put it onto the SD card, do pretty much the update menu, it shows up, you downloaded the Atari 2600 version 150, so you just go there, select the with the fire button, you write it, and then pretty much it's into the, the system. So that's pretty much in here, and now you can start it up. So that's as simple as you update the system with a new core. Okay. Cores are out there, as I said, on our webpage. The policy is uh, we release the cores for free, so there's no additional fee for getting additional cores. Um, that's... Uh, uh, pretty much you buy the system once and then you can upgrade it down the road with more cores. Uh, is there any plans on adding like the Atari 8-bit or ST? Yeah, actually we are looking a little bit into a different kind of, of, of uh, topics. The Apple II, uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, Atari uh, XLXD, 400 and 800. So this is a little bit the things which we have in mind. Uh, we haven't completely decided yet what will be next, but most likely we will we'll go in the Apple II direction first, Apple IIe, and then we have to see pretty much what comes afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You find us as well on Facebook, on Twitter and so on, so on our webpage there are links, you can follow us, and we always announce there the latest, uh, so to say, things what are happening. And actually I think we maybe might, will make as well a survey to really see and ask the, the, the guys what they would like to see next in course actually just to get a little bit of rating and some voting there the people have to wait to say okay I like this I like that and we maybe can see a little bit what the people would like to have on the system. Cool. See you yeah. at, see what a garden is already. So that's the uh, multiple classic computer. Well thank you very much. Thank you.